during your run of Metal Magic, we've gotten a lot of questions from people basically saying, could you show us the rest of Paul's shop? And, uh, and we thought we'd give you a little look behind the scenes. Now, this is a nice shop. It's not what you need for a basic home builder. It's also not a commercial shop. But, but we have a lot of tools that a lot of people probably don't have, but you might want. Let's just take a look at some of the things. One of the things we have, which is nice and we're custom building, is this combination tool. It's not a big one, but it gives us a shear and a bender and a roller. So we can shape sheet metal into various shapes and we can shear it nicely without, without losing a lot to cutting. So that's a really handy device to have. Um, another thing hiding here in the corner is a fairly large um, uh, hydraulic or pneumatic squeezer which we use for spars if we're if we're riveting a spar but you can use it anytime you have a position where you want to do do a, a, a specialized type of riveting it'll this will handle uh, f dash five and dash six rivets so it's a pretty good uh, guy good size unit this is another machine that most people aren't going to need matter of fact you're really not going to need if you're building a good kit everything's going to be preformed this is a, a smithy combination machine it's a mill and a lathe all in one with a digital readout that we so we can get very very precise uh, when we're trying to uh, position things and 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 shave off uh, bushings and things like that it's really handy again when we're prototyping when we're making special bushings things like that um, but but you're not going to need one it's just really fun to have so another tool that we use during the series that we really find useful is the bandsaw it's useful enough that we don't just have one of them, we have two of them. Why two? One of them we keep a fairly wide blade on, and that's really handy for making long straight cuts. It's easier to cut straight. The other one has a fairly narrow blade on it, and that's almost like a scroll saw. We can cut curves much, much better with it. Both of them have very, very fine teeth, really good for running uh, aluminum. You don't want to try and cut your steel on this, or you won't have a blade left. The drill press... It's very, very nice when you're trying to make smooth, nice holes, especially if you're trying to do several of them. And if you're going to do a, get a drill press, get a drill press vise so that you can hold your material. Um, we use this a lot when we're doing a lot of repetitive holes, um, and we generally keep a variety of drill bits on a magnet here behind the wall so that it's easy to keep just the ones that we usually use for uh, aircraft building. This is our grinding and polishing workbench. We keep all of the mess here in one spot. We start with a, uh, a disc sander, which is really handy for squaring off parts that we've cut. Then we have a bench grinder, which has Scotch-Brite wheels on both sides. One of them is fairly new and it's nice and straight for doing straight edges. And one of them is old and worn out, which is really handy if you're trying to put curves on things. So we just keep that worn out one there. And we have another bench grinder that has uh, a wheel, a stone wheel for doing steel and also a uh, wire wheel for doing steel or cleaning up whatever needs to be cleaned up. Up here, we keep an assortment of grinding and polishing things, mostly Scotch-Brite, but also some sanding discs that we use on handheld sanders. So this whole area is really where we finish metal. It's a really handy place to, to have, and then we can vacuum up all of the dust later on. This is Big Mama. A friend of ours built it. It's a 26 inch deep squeezer yoke, which you mount your hydraulic squeezer on the top. And you can actually dimple all the way to the middle of a four foot wide sheet. You're not gonna need one of these generally, but it sure is handy to have when you do. Welcome to the workbenches. This massive workbench is actually built up of scrap wood. This one was made out of a packing crate that our Xenos motor glider parts came in. And the long skinny one is actually two hollow core doors on a two by four frame. The interesting thing about it is people sometimes put a lot of pride into their workbench and that's okay. But when you're gonna be building in metal, you are going to be drilling a lot of holes in the top of your workbench because you're gonna drill right through the metal and into it. So if you put a really fancy top on your workbench, buy a thick piece of scrap wood to put on top as a sacrificial uh, surface. It's really handy when you build a bench to have storage underneath. We keep all of these parts pertain to one airplane kit. These are the few remaining parts for the, uh, the motor glider over there. Uh, and also some scrap that is associated with the motor glider in case we need anything. It's also handy to use the rest of the area under the workbench for storage for large items, crates, and vacuum cleaners and the like. 
Mounted to this end of this big heavy duty tick workbench is our big shop vise. The really sh a big shop vise is really handy. Um, if you buy them by the pound, you can get a good deal on them. It's bolted very firmly to this workbench so it's not going anywhere and you can really wail on something if you have to uh, with a big hammer. So it's really, really useful. When you're working on a kit of any kind, you're going to have drawings, you're going to have instructions. It's really handy to have a place to put the plans, to put the instructions that's not in the middle of your workspace. So we just have a simple big board here sitting on top of, a, of an inexpensive folding table. This is where we keep our plans. We've got them all bound together for this particular project. And uh, it's a really, really handy place to sit down and work where you're not in the middle of a mess. So think about a place to put your plans. In a workshop, never underestimate the importance of storage. We have all sorts of storage here in the shop to keep things off the, off the work tables and the like. So set of shelves to keep small tools, to keep materials, keep tape, things like that. We've got stacks and stacks of spark plugs for all the airplanes we fly. Then, then we have larger items. Follow me down to the other end of the shop. You'll notice that our workbenches have drawers underneath them to keep various things like abrasives and, and the like. Um, cabinets to keep extra tape, cable ties, all sorts of things. Large cabinet is where we keep paint, solvents, and primers, um, brake fluids, and the like. Nice thing about this cabinet is that it has a place to put a padlock in case you want to keep people from getting into that kind of stuff. When you're keeping fiberglass supplies, it's really handy to keep candy to keep them in a big plastic tub so that if they drip, they don't drip on your floor and make a mess. They'll just drip into the tub. We get down this end, we keep prototyping things. We've got lots and lots of uh, aluminum tubing for, um, for, for making fuel lines or brake lines, tubs for the various parts that we keep on hand, and have shelves for large items like fuel tanks and wheel pants. Keeping your shop organized is going to make you a lot happier. Whether you're building or maintaining an airplane, you really need a good toolbox. You're going to have building tools, you're going to have maintenance tools. You're going to have things that work for both. So a lot of screwdrivers, a lot of wrenches. Uh, down here, we've got tons of different socket wrenches, both uh, metric and English. And then we've got drill bits. We've got riveting tools, places to put rivet squeezers, squeezer dies, things like that. Um, all the way down here, we keep Clecos. We have lots and lots of Clecos stored away because when you get into a really big project, you're going to need a lot of Clecos. And remember, as we said, you can always borrow more if you need them. This really technically isn't part of metal magic, but it completes the workshop. So this is what I kind of refer to as the clean workbench, although it's not very neat right now. This is where we keep all of our nuts and bolts and hardware, and we also can work on electronics, things like that. The red toolbox at the end is mostly dedicated to electronics and to measuring tools, things like that. Um, it's kind of an arbitrary division, but this is a place we can sit and work on small items without having a whole lot of aluminum dust around. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of our workshop. It's, again, much more workshop than the average home builder is going to need or have, but it hopefully, it hopefully give you a few ideas of what you might want to set up for yourself.